Yahoo, Prof here, and we're shooting a tech update for you on the uh, Sony RX0 Mark II. I already shot the bulk of this, um, but uh, don't buy A Data micro SD cards. Um, I don't know, this is like the third or fourth one that I've had go on me. It just kept having to recover data as it was trying to record. Um, so, yeah, right there. I got that little guy off of. Uh, mass drop and uh, now it's called drop nothing issue with them but my 128 I actually ended up getting refunded as they sent me two of them and uh, both the original and the second one uh, what would end up happening with those was they would not do the full UHS 2 speed which is kind of like USB 3.0 for SD cards it adds a bit of extra pins on there you can kind of see on some of those probably that second row of pins back there that's UHS 2 kind of like USB 3 for SD cards and after some use it would just not be able to use UHS 2 anymore on that. I never had any issues with the 256 um, but like I said I was recording on the Arc Zero Mark II and uh, it would just kick out saying data recovery mode or something and be able to record another couple minutes and then back to that mode so my luck with ADATA cards I've never had great luck with their SSDs to be truthful but those cards were dirt cheap on mass drop um, I ran that thing in my phone for a while without issue, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend those. I run all Lexar cards, but don't buy Lexar right now. Um, Lexar now is no longer Lexar. They got bought out by a Chinese company. Um, Prograde would probably be the ones I would go with. They're made from X Lexar company and some people from SanDisk, um, like actual engineers and stuff. Um, otherwise, uh, Angelbird, if you want something real high end. But uh, yeah, stay away from, even if it looks like a good deal on those ADS cards, uh, stay away. Uh, I'll see if I can RMA that. Uh, you can follow that over my Twitter, which is at the Prophecist, uh, for uh, all the RMAs. If you haven't seen that hashtag before, check it out. So let's go over what I was before. Um, we're on the, the old Herman Miller right now. Here is my closet. We're using my new headlamp to illuminate it. All the shelving is up. I may or may not have had a tech update with this already in here, but it is in and it is sturdy. Um, I added tie wraps to hold down. There really should have been. There's even holes for ways to hook or clamp, like a screw to go down and like a clamp to go across or something. Um, uh, but they intended for it to be tight enough. I don't know once it got weight on. It was way, way sturdier once I added all those tie wraps that you can see. It was like kind of three to four per arm that comes out. I highly recommend that. I like the shelf otherwise. Pretty easy installation. Oddly enough, it also recommended not to use studs when in this configuration, specifically where you have three of them um, and they want the middle one. Was the middle one? Or at least one of them to hit a stud. Uh, with three things, with this width shelf, you can very easily hit three studs. So I don't know why you wouldn't do that. And they include enough hardware to hit all three studs, even though the manual said specifically not to do that. They also said not to pre-drill the holes. However, the screws were big enough where I felt I really should pre-drill those holes. So I did. And as you can see, it's probably installed better than what they expected. Um, you might be able to see something in that corner over there. We'll go over that in a bit. So the other thing that is new, uh, well, obviously I talked about my headlamp here. This is an Army Tech Wizard C2 Pro. They renamed their line. It was like Wizard, Wizard V2, which I do have, and I have a Wizard V3. And a V3 Nichia, which is like their special edition one, which has a very uh, neutral LED in it. So great for like revealing lighting and stuff like that. Um, you can see here, Wizard C2 Pro. That makes me think they might make the uh, smaller one. Here you go, which is, I think is the Tierra for the Pro model, um, or it would be the Elf for the not Pro model. Uh, this will probably become the Wizard C1 Pro, I would imagine. And I will probably pick one of those up then. I did go warm this time because their warm is a little bit less orange. Um, and I have plenty of the bright white ones. Um, some of the changes on here, um, we're just using the backlighting on this monitor for some extra light here. 
are all the corners are like way way more rounded um, it's just a much smoother package um, there's less rings on the heat sink down here but they're bigger so I don't know if that's better or worse um, it is like one or two mil longer but now both ends of the battery inside are it's gonna be kind of hard to show that one-handed but they are spring-loaded so before sometimes the battery kind of feel like it gets stuck in there because there's nothing like when you take the butt cap off here or the tail cap as they call it um nothing would actually like eject the battery out um and you kind of bang it against your hand now i added a spring in there so that it kind of kicks itself out that made it like one or two mil longer i think it's worth it um, and the button now is much bigger and flatter but it's got a much better click too and then along with the new button you got the double click to go turbo um, whereas in the past uh, you just had to keep cycling through the modes to get turbo like you just have to keep going brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter so check this out if I don't have it in the description hit me up throw a comment I can send you a link um, if you don't already have a headlamp I really do think army techs because of the diffuser diffusion which you can kind of see there um, which makes it a nice even light um, for at least what I do, by far the best headlamp. And I did find a supplier for the non-magnetic end caps that make it a little bit smaller, and I don't like the magnet. Um, some people might like it for charging or for sticking to stuff. What happens to me is I stick my head in a computer case and it sticks to the computer case, or I go work on my car under the hood and my head sticks to the hood. So those need to go. Also over here, we have... Uh, all new, if you can see, new mounts. Now these did not work out perfectly. I'm afraid they worked out pretty well and I do recommend them. Um, so like once again, if this stuff isn't in the, in the description of the video, I might have forgotten. Hit me up in the comments or over on any of my social media. You can find me as at the prophecist or the channel as um, at tech exchange the. Uh, you can see here I kind of maxed this out. I even probably went a little bit over what I should have, but it's sturdy enough um i did talk to the brand and they said the reason why it isn't taller is because they're worried about weight so i don't know if they can use a bigger base with like a thicker internal tube to get the same arms on it i'm still going to reply to them and work on it because as you can see if i do one 24 inch monitor vertical um you cannot get even going past the top of it a little bit you cannot get this top monitor wide enough if you can see here it overlaps that would probably bug the crap out of a lot of you. Um, it's not too bad when you look from this angle because it covers up the bottom bezel and then I touch the taskbar. Now as you can see here, I have the Ghost in the Shelf soundtrack up there. The new one with the new uh, USB right here. Check that thing out. This is so sick. This. Superb music, high resolution USB, and it's engraved on there. Ghost in the shell, and that's a USB drive in there. Um, well, I copied that all on my PC, and it's in Fubar right now. And that's what I mainly use this monitor for. Is like I got my gadgets. Yes, you can still use the Windows Vista slash pre-service pack 1 Windows 7 gadgets in even Windows 10 because it wasn't beta Windows 8 and um, then also YouTube that sort of stuff or full screen video might be up here when I'm editing in uh, Premiere if it's not on that top one um, but yeah so then I got uh, arms back here too these worked out this bottom monitor technically with my height I look almost at that right there so um, I would like it to be a little bit higher to get this bottom one up. Uh, single monitor mount, perfect. That is a vertical 27 inch. And it's actually angled down, if you can see the arm a little bit. And angled forward. So, like, you got plenty. You could easily get that off the desk a bit more. Uh, but for dual monitors, and I have talked to the brand about it. Um, and they're looking into, like, what they can do. But apparently their engineers say, currently, like, the, basically the mounting to the desk harbor isn't strong enough. These arms that are new ones, they're super nice. They're air piston. Um, you just loosen this to adjust it to the weight of your monitor. And um, then it like holds it perfectly. 
Um, so yeah, um, my idea to get this working a little bit better is what I'm going to do is actually build a little like step up here that's like you know yay high and then mount it to that so what that'll do is actually raise the base up which will raise the whole thing up and then uh this bottom one can actually hang down which will then give the top one more room to go up i'll just have to figure out what the optimal amount of height for that is like eight inches or something um that's probably the easiest like a two by eight because that's gonna be plenty strong um but uh along with the new mounts and why those came in if you can see them right there, those three on the left, which are hooked up to the 2080 Ti, those are three uh, Asus XG27UQs, which are the 24, or sorry, 27 inch, 4K, 144 hertz, one millisecond uh, monitors. And they are glorious. Oh, HDR is in there as well. Forgot, there's so many check boxes. Like literally it checks off everything. And this, this monitor basically is why I bought a 2080 Ti. Um, and yes, I have three of them. To be truthful, there'd be more, but the other card in the system is a 750 Ti, and it can't even do 4K 30 on these. Or that it only does 4K 30, no HDR even. Um, yeah, these things are glorious. Highly recommend them if you get your hands on them. B&H Photo seems to be the best way. Uh, they did pop into stock um, for a very short period on Newegg. I had a B&H photo one back ordered since early December, finally came in mid-January, I want to say, mid to late January, and then uh, before that actually came in though, Newegg suddenly had stock and I bought one there, and then uh, B&H had a little bit of stock left from that pre-order, I guess, and I picked up the third one. So, and that's when the arms came in, because I'm like, eh, if I'm putting up all these new monitors, let's get some proper arms for them, you know what I mean, um, instead of before you can see kind of the marks. I had non-adjustable TV mounts on the wall, so that, uh, I mean, it's an improvement, but it's an improvement that I feel like I need to improve a little bit. Like, I love, love these arms. I will link them for the money. Like, it's like less than 60 bucks for the dual arm with, and if you notice, this isn't a dual arm off of the desk. This is a pole and then a dual arm. Um, nothing like those Space Co. ones like Wendell has or something, but for, for the money, and like how well these adjust, like well... Yahoo! Prof's back downstairs. Wow, third person. Great. Um, we got cut off a little bit because of um, the Arc Zero Mark II likes to overheat when you shoot 4K, which is the whole reason I have it. But um, yeah, if you stay under like 10 minutes, you're fine. It's really annoying otherwise, though. Uh, you can see my new specs, if you didn't notice that before. Um, if you see blue coming back, that's because of the blue light filter. Um, a nice clear pair of Oakleys. One of the few selfies I have uh, ever with, with them, because it's very hard to show off glasses without wearing them. Um, and uh, we'll actually go over what's going on in the basement here. Uh, a lot happened here, down here as well. Um, and then we'll get into uh, what else we're doing. Um, so here's the thing for all my guys up there that do PC as well. Um, I don't know why it refused to focus. This, however, is my um, my repair PC. And I don't know if it'll do it right now. Let's see here. Okay, so it came back. What it'll do is... I don't know why this thing's refusing to focus. Very odd. Um, but what it'll do is, like, see how it resumed? Turn the monitor back on? Sometimes when it does that, it just comes back with a blank monitor. And the only way to get that back is to force... Not even just shut it down, like press it and let it shut down on its own. It won't come back then. You have to force power it off. So if you guys have any ideas, I've run in this before. Uh, it's been motherboard issues. Uh, I don't know if you guys have like a specific driver you've seen it with or a specific piece of hardware, like maybe graphics card or power supply that you think I should swap out. Both of those are pretty much brand new. Um, 
But yeah, and it's not that it went to sleep, the monitor is just turning off, because this system is set up to never, like, C states is turned off, speed steps turned off, so, like, it doesn't ever really power down, um, except when I shut it down, because that's, when it's up, I need it up, repairing, doing data backups, etc. So, if you have any ideas on this, um, let me know, because um, it's this mysterious thing that doesn't happen all the time, and then, also, uh, when it does that, it knocks my whole network down, for some reason. So, don't know what's up with that. Um, like, if it's connected to LAN, it will actually knock out the router until I power cycle everything. If it does that while well, it's hooked up, which is why no network right now. If everything's blurry, I do apologize. Um... All the shelving's up. I don't know if I've shown you this previously or not. Yeah, that's just like not focusing, is it? Very, very odd. Um. And I really don't know what to say on that. 